Hi, I'm Jerry Kafitz. I'd like to talk to you today about marriage. What makes a successful marriage? Well, the first thing that I'd like to tell you is this. I'm going to tell you a little secret here. And this is very, very important to understand. And this is the key to everything that I'm going to say. Are you ready? Listen carefully. Men and women are different. There you go. Now, was that worth the price of admission already or what? Men and women are different. They're different. How are they different? Aha! That's the key to everything that I'm going to say. Not so much even how they're different, but why that difference is there. It's there for a reason. And we need to understand that reason. And we need to cooperate with that reason. And we need to adapt to that reason. And if we do, we're going to have a successful marriage. And if we don't, it's a roll of the dice. And you're going to be uh, making big mistakes, fatal mistakes in marriage about 50% of the time based on statistics. Okay. Now, why and how are men and women different? I'm going to give you a scientific axiom, a scientific principle that anybody who walks out into nature will immediately see and understand and recognize. And that is this, form follows function. Okay? Form follows function. The form of an organism in nature is based on how it is supposed to function. Its design has to do with its purpose. All right? A fish is streamlined so it can go through the water. It's light underneath and dark on top so it'll blend in to the surface when seen from below and to the bottom when seen from above by predators. Form follows function. Now just as we have obvious physical differences in the form and the function of men and women based on the original design concepts, okay, going way, way back into human history and human origins and understanding what the design concepts were, what the intention was for how these organisms, human beings, were supposed to function and how their functions were supposed to be different and complement each other. Okay? Women are designed genetically, mentally, emotionally, and physically to nurture, to nurture. Men are designed in those respects to provide and to protect. Okay? Now, together, when there is the ability to provide, to protect, to procreate together, and then to nurture, what do we have? We have a family. And the family needs all of those elements to function. The question is, how do those within that family unit who are in, in, empowered by those individual and, and very different characteristics function together. That's what we call marriage. The uh, form follows function is something that we see in a physical sense but also in an emotional sense. And that is why the most common complaint that we hear in marriage counseling coming from women is He's so insensitive. And the most common complaint that comes from men is, she is so irrational. Why? Because that's how they were made. If you're a man, you were made to be rational. You were made to be, to be thinking about how to provide, how to protect. If you're a woman, you were made to be emotionally sensitive. Why? Well, because that's the role of the mother in the family, okay? So we have insensitivity and we have irrationality. So what happens then? What happens then? Well, these have to be harmonized in a marriage in order to work. How does that happen? We have to understand that we are made differently for a reason. Now, my belief is, is that a mental effort in accomplishing this task is only going to go so far and it's going to break down on a very regular basis. The Christian model, the biblical model, the Judeo-Christian model is this. The oath of allegiance that's made, the obligation, the responsibility that constitutes a marriage is not 
as much between two individuals as it is between each individual and God. So when you are accountable to a higher authority, then that higher standard should precipitate more faithfulness, more consideration, more compassion, more uh, concession to the other person. And in the Judeo-Christian model, what we have is a mandate of selflessness. And that mandate of selflessness says, you give everything for the other person. Do you meet them halfway? No, you meet them 100% of the way on their side of the halfway mark. And what about them? They're supposed to do the same thing. So if you have two people that are committed, not just to coming together in the middle, but that are coming together on the other side of the middle, far, far in excess of a position that represents their personal best interest, then how can you fail to meet that middle ground? That's the Christian model of marriage. That's the biblical model of marriage. And it works. It really and truly works. If it's sustained by a life of faith, if it's sustained by a support group reinforcing that belief called the church, those are marriages that succeed. Marriages outside of that, if they do succeed, they're going to succeed with difficulty. I'm Dr. Jerry Kafitz.